present to you a message that I will call it relationship of the Holy Spirit. Relationship of the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, at the end of last year, I preached uh, about the ark, how the ark is symbolic of Jesus. It has the wooden, um, it was made out of wood, how the gospel is made out of the cross how it had one door, it's like Jesus, He is the only door to salvation, how it had one window, how it's like the Bible who is the only window through which we see the truth and the truth comes to us, how the ark had one family which is symbolic of us being one family who are in Christ, how also the ark had a dove and that's like the Holy Spirit who was leaving through the window and that's like the Holy Spirit who speaks to us through the Word of God and then last week we talked about how righteousness of Jesus is like this bronze serpent Jesus became sin so we can become righteousness amen but today I'm gonna take one step further and talk about how the grace of Jesus how the gospel how the message of the cross is the basis and the foundation of the relationship that the Holy Spirit has with us We've done a lot of messages here and we talk a lot and I'm releasing a book in a few months that will be called Host the Holy Ghost. It will be about relationship with the Holy Spirit but something that I want to touch on is the relationship of the Holy Spirit. So it's not a relationship you have with Him, it's a relationship He has with you. The basis of that relationship is the cross, the grace of Jesus Christ. I'm going to read a verse from 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14 it says the following, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. If you start the Bible from the beginning, for those of you who uh, read the Bible from beginning to end, which I highly encourage you to do every single year, the best the best investment of your time. In the second verse in the Bible it says, the earth was without form and void and the darkness was on the face of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters and then God said, let there be light and there was light. So the Holy Spirit came when it was dark but the Holy Spirit moved when there was light. Now when did the light come from? When God said, and the scripture says in John chapter 1 is the beginning there was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. When Jesus Christ begins to come into our life, the Word of God comes into our life. Our darkness leaves, we have light and it begins to, we begin to experience not only the presence of the Holy Spirit with us, we begin to experience the moving of the Holy Spirit in our life. See every Christian and unbeliever has the Holy Spirit with them. Every, every person who doesn't know the Lord has the Holy Spirit with them. That's why Jesus told his disciples, he says, the Holy Spirit is with you, but he will be in you. And after his resurrection, he breathed on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? That means that as people who don't know God, Holy Spirit is around them just like He was here on the dark when there was no void and everything. But Holy Spirit waits for the light to come in. He waits for, for Christ to be accepted, for the Word of God to be accepted. And when that's expect, accepted, Holy Spirit goes to work. He goes from being with you to goes to living in you. He begins to have a relationship with you. And I understand in our church we put an emphasis on our relationship with Him. Today, I would like to adjust your focus to His relationship to you. That relationship is built on Jesus. Meaning, Holy Spirit has a relationship with you based on Jesus. Sometimes I cry out to the Holy Spirit because of my crisis. He reaches to me because of Christ. Not my hunger, not my pursuit, not my Bible reading, not my fasting, not my abstinence or different things that I do to discipline my flesh. None of these are sufficient to be the foundation for His relationship with me. These are important. These are valuable. These have a place in our discipleship and in our following of Christ. But the Spirit of God came and started to move because the light came. When Jesus comes into my life, when the gospel becomes the center of my life, the Spirit of God responds to that by moving and starting to do something that is miraculous, supernatural and impossible. The Holy Spirit comes on 
Christ. It was the lamb that was here getting baptized that the dove descended on. If there is no lamb, there will be no dove. If there is no cross, there will be no Pentecost. If there is no light, there will be no moving of the Holy Spirit. That's why in John chapter 7, Jesus says, He says, for they have not received Him yet, because Christ was not yet glorified. Glorified meaning crucified. Christ has not offered Himself as, as a sacrifice on the cross. The Holy Spirit comes down when Christ is glorified. In other words, when Jesus Christ, the grace of God, becomes the center focus, the Holy Spirit begins to flow freely in our life. I fear, myself included, that many times we have put above the death of Jesus Christ our spiritual hunger and spiritual thirst. Spiritual hunger and thirst is good, but it has to be a response to His invitation of relationship with us, not initiation. We are responders and the Holy Spirit is an initiator. Holy Spirit wants to come, rest, live and dwell and operate through you. Not because you are good, but because Christ died on the cross. Amen? Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14 as we read and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you let's break this down before there could be communion there has to be grace and love grace of the Lord Jesus Christ what is grace it's different than mercy mercy is when you're speeding and the police officer pulls you over and doesn't give you a ticket that is mercy and can somebody say praise God, praise God. how many of you had those mercies that's why the Bible says God renews them every morning <laughs> that's mercy but that's not grace grace is when you were speeding and the police officer pulls you over and he gives you a check that is grace Mercy is when you stole somebody something from your neighbor, you reached into their purse, you thought it was yours, and you took a hundred dollars and they didn't report you to police, that is mercy. Grace is if they pull another hundred and give it to you. So I want you to see that Jesus has grace to offer. Grace of Jesus. It doesn't say grace of lad, it doesn't say grace of your wife or your husband. We are very poor for, with grace. Jesus has abundance, amazing grace, abundant grace and so He gives us grace. Now that grace is not an excuse to sin, it's a power to overcome sin. But Jesus has grace to give. Somebody give God some praise for grace. Grace of Jesus, it's not mercy. Mercy keeps me away from what I deserve. Grace gives me what I don't deserve. That is why it's okay to pray bold prayers. That is why it's okay, it's good if you know the grace of God to expect things you don't deserve because that's what grace is about. Jesus got what he did not deserve so that I can get what I don't deserve. Grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. See so many people they have not embraced grace. The, all of their prayers and faith and expectation and dream is on the level of mercy. God please don't let my past sin catch up with me. God, if you could just cancel all the bad stuff I did and don't let it ever surface in my future. That's good. That's mercy. Jesus has more than mercy. Grace of Jesus. He has a gift for you. It's called grace. He has given you mercy, but He also has grace. You may say, I don't deserve it. It wouldn't be grace if you qualify. It wouldn't be grace if you could deserve it. It wouldn't be grace if you can earn it. It wouldn't be grace if you had to pay for it. Mercy is what you don't deserve gets taken away. What you deserve gets taken away but grace is what you don't deserve gets accredited to your account and that's amazing. Can we step one step further? Grace of Jesus. Jesus is amazing. He gives us grace. God the Father says well I also have a gift. John 3 16 says for God so love the world. For God so loved the world. I remember when that became real to me on the train in Ukraine about five years ago. 
we were in the metro and I was scrolling through my Bible app and just going through my reading and I paused on this verse for God so loved the world I reread it maybe 50 times slowly the word so dropped so deep and I realized God didn't just love me that would have been enough he didn't send his son out of pity God didn't look at me and felt sorry for me God didn't look at me and felt sympathy for me not out of even compassion but love that means he had an affection he had interest in me he loved not ju just loved so loved so this wasn't just ordinary love good love amazing love love that that makes us feel good God says my love is so loved and guess who he loved not the me Christian the world meaning he so loved the world me before I became a Christian before I cleaned up my act before I surrendered my life God so loved the world and the word so and the world it sunk in my heart and right there in metro I started to cry because I realized if God so loved the bad me can you imagine how much he loves me now that I'm his child I'm not the world no more I am his son can you imagine how much more can you imagine the depth of his love if he loved me so much when I was the world how much more he loves me that I am his child so God says I have a gift for you and no 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 I'm not gonna give you just life that's already been given to you when you were born I'm giving you love that's unfailing love that is undeserving love that no 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 not eros not filio agape love unconditional love love that has no strings attached love that's not dependent on your actions is dependent on me because I am love I don't love you because you're lovable I love you because I'm loving and my love changes you especially for us the fatherless generation people who grew up without knowing our fathers people who grew up who love is meant abuse or maybe love was exemplified in such a way that I provide for you but I don't give you affection or anything this is so crucial and important not to skip this stage don't jump to the Holy Spirit until you unwrap the gift of grace don't jump to the Holy Spirit until you unwrap the love of the Father if you if you open up the love of the Father you won't have to look for a boyfriend to feel loved you will look for a husband to give love if you unwrap this love you're not gonna have to turn a romance into a rehab you're not gonna struggle with the Savior syndrome always need to be needed because that love satisfies you that love heals you that love goes into the depths of your soul because it's so loved it goes deep into the small cracks of your soul and it heals it and it makes you a person that can love others in a supernatural way not a natural unusual way and then when you meet the grace of Jesus you're like man I'm loaded you meet the love of the love of God you're like I'm bloated the Holy Spirit says I still have something too and the Holy Spirit has a gift watch this the grace is the gift of Jesus the love is the gift of the Father and the Holy Spirit and we would think Holy Spirit has tongues but that's not what it says and here it says and the communion the fellowship of the Holy Spirit I'm going to tell you how most of us read this verse and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit that's not what it says it doesn't say your fellowship with him it says his fellowship with you that means it's his gift to you fellowship fellowship is different than prayer prayer is when you ask prayer is when we create supplication intercession where we where we bring thanksgiving where we bring praise and worship fellowship is a little bit different fellowship is always done among friends now it's true that fellowship of the Holy Spirit means there is open room for fellowship with the Holy Spirit because you can't have fellowship one way street unless it's a dysfunctional marriage where you went and you had fellowship which means your wife talked and you just nodded that's not fellowship I know it seemed like we were talking no you were talking and the other person just went mm-hmm because mm -hmm, if I say anything 
this fellowship will go to a different level that is not the fellowship the Holy Spirit is talking about where he's only talking and you cannot talk back I have people constantly reach out they say give me a verse in the Bible where it says we can talk to the Holy Spirit it's very simple give me a definition in which fellowship is one person talking that's not possible it doesn't exist in this world Holy Spirit has a gift to give you you know what that gift is my friend it's not just the gift of power miracles it's the gift of relationship now I understand that just like you and I when I get to the Holy Spirit part I'm like Holy Spirit you're like for people like Andres Bisoni like those people that's understandable but that's not for me I need the grace though because God I had some things happen in the past I do need some love why because no matter how good my dad was it wasn't enough but the fellowship, Lord, I think Vlad needs that more. I think Ilya needs that more. My home group leader definitely needs that. That's for them. Watch this verse very carefully again. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. With what? With who? With who? What does it say? The verse. Oh, I was hoping you were seeing the verse. I'm seeing the verse and the communion of the Holy Spirit would you would you go back to that verse please and the communion of the Holy Spirit 2nd Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 it says and the communion of the Holy Spirit with who with you that your neighbor say all is you stay home moms you're in that all business owner you are in that all stop disqualifying yourself because you don't have a ministry Holy Spirit has a gift it's not about whether you have a ministry it's whether are you willing to receive the gift you don't disqualify yourself from the grace just because you don't have an international ministry you don't disqualify yourself from the love just because you don't have the office of an apostle or a preacher not a your life group leader but somehow relationship of the Holy Spirit is for elite my friend it's for all of you Holy Spirit has a gift but that gift follows the love and the grace the moving of the Holy Spirit comes after the light of God comes when you receive the lamb the dove will descend Christ was spirit was not given because Christ wasn't glorified that tells me I can have a relationship with Holy Spirit because of my hunger but he has a relationship with me because of the cross that's his gift to me that changes everything because then I know it's not me trying to Holy Spirit um, can I uh, can I talk to you you know like those people that are very like maybe you want to see them like maybe it's your boss or maybe somebody who you really want to talk to for just a few minutes and a lot of times they're very unavailable and, and you feel like man I'm intruding a lot of us feel like that about Holy Spirit you're like man it's like he's so out there and I'm so down here it's other way around he is the one constantly intruding if I could use that word he is initiating he wants a relationship with you maybe you feel insecure maybe you feel like but I have nothing like I don't need the Holy Spirit in my life that way I'm not doing some kind of a big thing on the streets or healing or praying I mean I'm washing dishes watching over my family and everything my friend Holy Spirit has a gift and that gift is relationship and that gift is based on the grace and the love of the Father it's not based on you it's based on Jesus when the Holy Spirit you may say why does the Holy Spirit depend that on the grace because he is holy when you live in a sin when you live when you and I live in sin sin makes us a tomb Jesus called religious people tombs why it look, makes us a tomb because we are good through behavior modification but we are weak to create heart transformation tombs look shiny on the outside on the inside they're full of dead bones that's what a religious quote-unquote good man is is a tomb 
Holy Spirit cannot live because he doesn't live in tombs it's full of dead men's bones on the outside we look good because we compare ourselves with others on the inside we are spiritually dead and Jesus comes and he resurrects everything that's dead and makes it alive turns us from a tomb to a temple and a temple looks great on the outside but it has somebody greater living on the inside his name is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit doesn't live in tombs. Demons live in tombs. Holy Spirit lives in a temple who you and I are. The New Testament temple is portable. The New Testament temple is not, it doesn't have its roots in Jerusalem. It's you and I. We become the temple of the Holy Spirit. And Apostle Paul says, he says, don't you know you've been purchased with the blood. You no longer belong to yourself. You become the temple, which means the Holy Spirit's mailing address is your location. Holy Spirit lives inside of you. In fact, your own body becomes His house. He created it and now He inhabits it. So when you became saved, when you gave your life to the Lord, I think Jesus, He saves us and at that moment He prepares a place for us in heaven. I think Jesus called the Father and says, Father, uh, get one more room prepared because this one is coming. He calls the Spirit as a Spirit. I got you a room prepared in their heart and Holy Spirit starts coming. See salvation doesn't get me a place in heaven only. Salvation makes me a place for Him to be here right now. That's why the salvation changes me from a tomb to a temple because Jesus is not just looking to get me to heaven. He's looking to bring Holy Spirit inside. Holy Spirit is looking for a body. Holy Spirit is looking for someone to live in. He's looking for someone to inhabit and salvation makes you a place for the Holy Spirit. You may say, but I'm not good enough for that. He knows it. He is nice. He's very good. Very patient. All have fruit of the Spirit. That means that's the characteristics He has. Gentleness, self-control, patience. Holy Spirit is not snappy. He doesn't have mood swings. He doesn't have some kind of cycles. He's a good spirit. My dad, uh, my dad is a genius. He is really smart. The house that we live in right now, he helped me and my wife, he helped us to build it. In the sense that he oversaw the construction. I was gone most of the time on some ministry trips. My dad pulled the people together and helped with so much. And I pretty much, I always say, my dad built my house. I'm so grateful to him. A lot of what I have today, um, habits financially and, and even financially, it comes from the way my dad taught me and helped me along the way. And so recently, my dad and my mom moved in back with us. They were in, sold their house and they were trying to build something so they had a place to move in with us and they moved in with us. My dad who built the house, you know, he moves in and he tells me, he said, Vlad, I just want to let you know, I, I changed your shower head. He said that one, well, I didn't like it. It was leaking. I went and changed it. Uh, he said, you know, uh, there was an oven, uh, like the oven wasn't like screwed into the wall. I, I, I fixed that too. And so and I said, dad, you need to stay longer because you need to fix what you built. I was like, dad, I'm all, I'll only let your mercy, you know, I mean, you, you know this stuff. I'm not really good at those things. I can preach the gospel, but the shower heads don't change because I preach. They change because he knows how to fix them. As we were worshiping this afternoon, the Holy Spirit gave me a picture. He said, Holy Spirit is the one that created your body and your soul. When you bring him in, there's a lot of stuff that's leaking right now. He's going to start fixing them. Like a shower head. For some of you, that's your mouth. <laughs> for some of us patience begins to tweak and then there's the, the toilet is is leaking then there's a there's other stuff that is some of you you have a problem physically at the Holy Spirit when he moves in see you have to see him as somebody who loves you and who is for you and who knows your soul your body and your mind and your spirit inside out things that you don't know how to fix Things that you know are broken, but you're like, honestly, I've been to a therapist. I'm doing the whole thing, walking around my Jericho wall seven times, shouting on the seventh time. I've done the shout. I've done the dance. I've did the stuff, confessed it, and named it, blamed it, blamed it, named it, and claimed it. And it seems like I'm still broken. When you bring the Holy Spirit, 
and you have a relationship of the Holy Spirit, meaning He has a relationship with you, you just give Him room. I'm going to tell you one thing. He's going to begin to change you, transform you, come on, come on. and heal you. Yeah. Can I welcome Abraham and your wife Alexandra? Please. I want, I want them to share a little bit of what, what God did. Please. Abraham is the brother of Fabian who is behind us right now and uh, they're a wonderful family but few he's been coming for some time now I think it was the second visit that you you guys came right it was the second visit and they came to church and we had a healing prayer here and I want him to share of what the illness that he had and what the Lord did and then I want his wife also to share of what happened um, I had a severe ankle injury that um God healed me. Um, I was prayed for. Um, it was meant to last three times as longer as I had it. And I only had it for a short amount of time. Um, once I was prayed for, the day after, well, the day of, I was already healed. But the day after, you could physically see all the purple and swelling gone from my body. And that service, Abraham recommitted his life to the Lord because you were not walking with the Lord. So, and you're pastor, you PK, pastor's kid. Yeah, stubborn one, pastor kids. But hey, but you know, I love the fact that God touches a lot of pastors' kid in our kids in our church. And they get their fire again for the Lord. And that service, you get, you've surrendered your life to the Lord. And we've been seeing you here now every week. And I see you bringing people with you as well. And what happened to you? And that same service, when you guys came for prayer, God did something for you as well. Um, I had hip pain in both my hips for five years. And when I got prayed for, I felt a vibration in my body going all the way down to my feet. And after that, I was able to walk with no pain. And now it's been four weeks with nothing. And I, I feel whole. I feel good. Come on. In that service, uh, she also recommitted her life to the Lord. And you see, uh, there are... Their, their faces are shining. See, that's what happens when the Holy Spirit comes to live into the house. Things that are broken, He begins to take responsibility for it. See, some of us feel like, I'm afraid to entertain the thought that the Holy Spirit will live in me because I will fail Him, because I will not be good. Do you think Holy Spirit did not know that when He committed to live in you forever? Do you think He was not capable of foreseeing all the dumb stuff you're going to do? all the dumb thoughts you're gonna have, all the struggles. He did that and he did all the calculation and he measured it that it was still worth it. And he still chose it. He's not blindly going in, not sure what's gonna happen. He's God, he knows everything. And he knows that the sink that is broken, the floor and the other stuff, he created us perfectly but through sin we have some damages in our soul, we have damages in our mind, even some of us fighting sickness in our body. And when you welcome him in, you're welcoming him someone who builds you. He will help to restore you. He will help to rebuild you. He will make you new. And He will be with you till the end. That, my friend, is His relationship with you. And before you start applauding and saying, Oh, because I prayed with the church for three days. Awesome. 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 But that's not why. I haven't lost my Bible streak for 130 days. That's me. <laughs> that's awesome lad keep the track record but that's not why Holy Spirit is using you yeah. oh because you're a pastor no 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 it's not because of that it's not why he's using me it's not why he is with me it's the communion of the Holy Spirit with you all <laughs> Holy Spirit doesn't see a pastor he sees a child of God he doesn't see an evangelist he sees a daughter he sees you as a child of God and whether you've been in Christ for two weeks or two minutes he belongs to you the same way grace belongs to you the same way love belongs to you please do not disqualify yourself and say well this Holy Spirit thing that's for the special people it is you are one of them you're so special to God you're so dear to God he loves you so much he's letting Jesus give you grace he's giving you unconditional love and the Holy Spirit is giving you a gift of friendship, relationship, communion, and walking with you throughout life. In other words, He wants to move in. He wants to live with you every single day. Amen.
I want you to rise to your feet. Let's give a round of applause for Abraham and for Alexander. If you're in this room, if I can ask everyone to bow your head and close your eyes. Before we pray for people for healing and deliverance, I would like to give an opportunity for anybody in this room who have yet to give their life to Jesus Christ, who have not yet surrendered to the Lord, with no one looking around, if you can just bow your head and close your eyes. I would like to give an opportunity, if you're in this room today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, maybe Jesus is not the foundation that your life is built on. Today is the moment where you need to take that step and make Him by inviting Him into your heart. He's already knocking on your heart through the Holy Spirit. Maybe you walked away. Maybe you're even pastor's child, a deacon's child, a bishop's child, or priest's child. I, I don't know what your connection to the religion or to church, but I can tell you one thing. None of that will matter when you die. The only question will be, are you God's child? My friend, eternity is very long. Hell is hot. And Jesus is the only way. This is not to threaten or scare, but I have to remind you. God makes 7,000 promises in the Bible and, and not one of them is that tomorrow is promised. Scripture says, now is the time for salvation and today is the day. With no one looking at me or around, if you are in this room and you say, Vlad, I don't have a relationship with the Lord. I have not repented of my sin and placed my trust in what Jesus did on the cross. I'm still trying to achieve and prove to God that I can be good. I'm, I grew up Catholic. I thought that meant something. Yes, it, it's, it's really good, but it's not enough to enter into heaven and for the Holy Spirit to live in you. You have to have Jesus. I'm going to count to three. When I do so, if you need to give your life to Jesus or you walked away from Jesus, just slip up your hand and say, hey, count me in that prayer. I would like to give my life to the Lord. One, two, three. Just raise your hand high. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord is just asking you right now. He wants to come and live in you. The Holy Spirit wants to not only take you to heaven, He wants to come and live inside of you. As the team is going to sing, I'm going to, those of you who raised your hand or you wanted to raise your hand, I'm going to open this altar right now. And I would like to see you here so we can pray with you right now. If you wanted to commit your life to the Lord or recommit your life to the Lord, begin to make your way. Begin to make your way to the front right here. I want to see you right here. Just begin to come. If you brought a friend with you, you can ask him, say, hey, is he talking to you? If they say, ah, oh, yeah, I need to do that, you come with them. Friends, don't let friends not go to Christ. As the team will sing, let's just begin to right now welcome those people. Just come. If you need to give your life to the Lord, just come. We're going to wait for you. Let's come. Stand against the Lord. No one can. No one will. Who can stand against the King? Like this as though you're receiving something and just 
repeat this prayer out loud after me it's really your heart there's no magic in those words that I'm gonna say but the condition of your heart right now which I believe is broken before God repentant before God say this with me say Lord Jesus I believe that you died on the cross for all of my sin you are the Son of God I repent of my sin I place my trust in what you did on that cross I receive your gift of grace I receive the gift of your love and I receive the gift of relationship wash me clean set me free and fill me in Jesus name amen as, as we're gonna take him into the room right now can we give him a round of applause for our church come on and right now we're gonna get ready for prayer line Ivan's gonna lead the first prayer point right now so um, I'm just gonna welcome the Holy Spirit right now just begin to just just pray in the Holy Spirit we're gonna see people heal deliver today because today is the day the Lord's gonna move because of the grace because of the love and because of the communion of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name Church, place your hand on your heart as we're going to yield to the Holy Spirit. I want you to be, begin to open up your heart. Ask Him to take more of you. Ask Him to ask, surrender your heart to Him as we're going to yield, yield to God. So repeat after me. Say, oh Holy Spirit, take more of me. Give me more of you. I open my heart. I yield myself to you. Fill me. Take my anxiety, any fear. I surrender to you. Come on, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to yield to the Holy Spirit. Father, we yield to your Spirit in this place, God. As we're preparing our hearts for prayer line, God, we surrender our hearts to you, Lord. We yield it, God. We say that apart from you, we can do nothing, God. So take more of us and give us more of you. Take more of us and give us more of you. We yield our hearts to you in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ right now, we, we are going to come against every darkness that is in your life. Any darkness that might be hiding in your body, be it in the form of sickness, be it in the form of anxiety or what it is, whatever it might be. Jesus says that I am the light of the world and whatever Jesus is, darkness and demons must obey and they must flee in Jesus name. Amen church. Now this is a different type of prayer. It's not a prayer of asking God. It's not a prayer of pleading with God but this is the prayer of believers authority where Jesus said when you speak to this mountain it will be moved for your sake in Jesus name. Amen. Right now we're going to take authority over every darkness in your life and we're going to command it to go. Darkness cannot stand the light when you flip the switch and light goes on darkness disappears immediately darkness is no challenge to Jesus because Jesus is the light amen and so right now I want you to repeat after this prayer with me pray with with everything you got within you this is your moment and time to fight against the darkness operating in your life in Jesus name amen church say any darkness say whatever you are hiding in my life let there be light let there be light to any darkness, wherever you are, hiding in my health, right now, let there be light. Say any darkness, anywhere you are, hiding in my finances, let there be light. Say let there be light, let there be light. Say any darkness, wherever you are, hiding in my health. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. Say, I command every darkness. Leave my body. Leave my mind. Leave my life. In Jesus' name, I command. I declare. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. In my finances. In my health. In my marriage. Let there be light. In Jesus name right now put your hand on your on yourself and begin to declare begin to command every darkness to flee right now open up your lips because there is power in your words you carry authority in your words wherever you see darkness operating in your life this is the time this is the moment to take authority and to command it to go in Jesus mighty name we command every darkness to leave your body in Jesus name 
whatever it's operating whatever form whatever shape be it anxiety be it it uh, fear be it suicidal tendencies right now every darkness you must leave God's people once and for all in Jesus name the darkness that's hiding in people's health and bodies right now we take authority we command it let there be light in Jesus name let there be light in Jesus name father we declare that you are the light God and every darkness must flee in Jesus mighty name we pray Jesus mighty name in John 10 10 it says for the thief has come to steal and to kill and to destroy but I have come that I may that you may have life and life to the fullest we have to understand that demon is the cause of our affliction our pain our suffering it's not Jesus Jesus came to give us life so if there's anything in your life that you see that there's pain that there's fear that there's anxiety know that Satan is the architect of every pain in your life and you have to recognize your enemy and stand on the believer's authority and declare that demon that darkness to be out of your life you have to stand and know that Jesus said I've given you power to trample as snakes scorpions and demons that is your right you're not afraid of the darkness the darkness is afraid of you and right now this is exactly what we're gonna do we're gonna stand on the believers authority we're gonna declare that demon we're gonna declare that darkness to be out of our marriage out of our health out of our finances out of our relationships everywhere that they are to come out in Jesus name church I want to just repeat after me and say you demon I want to say more aggressive you demon the cause of my affliction the cause of my pain the cause of my suffering anywhere you are hiding my life in my marriage in my family in my finances out 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 of my life I take my authority in Jesus name and I command you anywhere you're hiding in my life out 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 come on begin to open up your lips begin to expel every shade of darkness out of your life begin to stand and begin to say you demon tormenting my future out of my life you demon tormenting my health out of my life you demon tormenting my finances out of my life you demon tormenting my marriage out of my life you demon tormenting my kids out of my kids life in Jesus name stand in the believers authority right now in Jesus name in the mighty name of Jesus you demon wherever you are hiding in my life I command it to be broken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I stand on the believers authority and I command you Satan you spirit wherever you are hiding in my life I command it to be exposed and expelled in Jesus mighty name and demon wherever you are I speak the light of God to begin to find that place and begin to expose it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray in Jesus mighty name and I want to do a last prayer before we go into prayer line and I want us to begin to invite the Holy Spirit into our lives into our bodies and just like Pastor Vlad was speaking when when his dad went to his house he began to fix he created the body he created the house he began to fix every leak that happened that was in his house and that's what happens when Holy Spirit when you invite the Holy Spirit he's gonna go into your finances into your health into your bodies into your families your education he's gonna begin to mend the things that are broken he's gonna begin to fix those places that are broken in Jesus mighty name so I want us to put our hands on our on our bodies right now and begin to invite the Holy Spirit say oh Holy Spirit say again say oh Holy Spirit I invite you into my life into every aspect of my life come fix the leaks come fix the things that are broken in my life I invite you come take control and move in Jesus name just begin to invite the Holy Spirit. Just keep your hand on your body. Begin to invite the Holy Spirit. Hey, this is Pastor Vlad, and thank you for watching this sermon. Please click on the subscribe so that you can be a part of our Hungry Generation YouTube community. And click on the bell as well so that you can be notified when we upload the new sermon. Thank you for watching, and God bless you.